Well, uh, my name is David Sloan. I'm an associate professor here at uh, New Pike, and uh, just been blessed. I, I've been blessed to to do almost any role possible in education, it's from a, from teaching to instructional assistant to a principal and and central office personnel, and now here a professor in the education department. So you had a wide variety of experiences in education. How many years total is that for you? Well, um, in the public education, it's been 29 years, and then uh, going on six years here now at New Pike. So that's 35 years. And prior to that, uh, of course, I tutored when I was going undergraduate work at Eastern. And so, as far as education, I guess is if you count even going to school, probably since I've been four years old. So that's. It's 52 years worth of uh, experience, I guess. Wow. So as a kid, did you, did you want to become a, a teacher and a professor someday, or what did you want to do as a kid? As a kid, I would never dream to be a professor at a university. I, I did have a, a great passion to explain things and, and, and teach, so I, I guess I always had a calling for teaching. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. But I, I loved math. I struggled, uh, had a speech impediment when I was younger. And I was in speech classes and things of that nature. And that was a difficult time because you, you're kind of, even, and you can imagine the time frame going to school in the 70s. And that was a difficult time for me. And I realized how you treat it different because you're poured out for special classes. So I worked really hard to work on my speech impediment and, and try to work on those and still work on it today. <laughs> but I really thrived in math classes and it just it just comes so natural and uh, it was just, I, I'd say it's God's gift. And, and not only was I blessed in it, I was always nominated by the teacher to go help somebody, to tutor someone. So through the whole time, as far back as I can remember, you know, I was that one that, if you don't understand it, David, can you come and explain this to someone? So I've been blessed that way, so I was in that position. So when we think about dreams, right? We're always telling our students, dream big, you know, and oftentimes I'll ask students about dream jobs. But what's a dream job for you? I'm living my dream. <laughs> I'm actually living it. I think if you've got passion, and for me to say this is a dream job, obviously, everyone's is different. When you dread to come to work, obviously it's not a dream job. And I don't dread it. I love it. I enjoy it. And don't get me wrong. There's days that are more difficult to get up than other days. And that's just human nature. We, we get into those days. But I've heard it say many times, you know, living your dream. I, I truly am. I'm living my dream. and it, It's one of those jobs you just, I, I love it. And to, to answer the question though, what's a dream job? It's it's something that you have a passion for, something that you enjoy doing, and something I feel like you have a calling for. Uh, you, you've got to have the content, you've got to have the knowledge to pass that on, whether it's fixing air conditions, whether it's driving a, a semi down the road, you've got to have the knowledge to do it, and you've got to have the passion and the will car that want to do that. So a dream job for it could be pushing a broom, and it, 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 that's if your job, and I've had uh, my aunt, who was a house uh, keeping uh, maintenance for the hospital, she took pride in what she done, and I think that's the key thing: is whatever you do, you take pride in it, and you do the best at it. That's what, that's what your dream job should be. And that's, I guess that's it. <laughs> well, you know, we all have different events or moments in our life that kind of push us and pull us and all kinds of stuff. Has there been anything in your life that's really spurred you on to just really? live that dream of education? It's been, it's not just been one moment, it's been several events. Um, I can remember I was probably in the third, fourth, fifth, sometime in the, in the middle school, learning my multiplication tables. Everything relates back to math it seems, but learning my multiplication tables. And I was doing my multiplication tables and reciting those back. My dad worked on the, on the railroad he had worked in the mines and he worked on the railroad, worked in the railroad over 35 years before he retired. But he'd come home and my dad never graduated high school. Uh, 
uh, he dropped out his senior year, uh, eventually went to World War II. Uh, my mom never went to high school. So not only my first year grad, first year generation college graduate, I'm a first year generation high school graduate. Education was so important to my family and it was, we respected teachers and, and so when I come on I studied more vacation, my dad would quiz me and he said, I was real good at math too. And he said, I bet you can't beat me. And I couldn't, he could, he could. And then my mom ran a little grocery store and she was a whiz and the eighth grade education, she was doing people's income taxes and, and think, and smartest woman I've ever met in my life with an eighth grade education. And I, they inspired me to be the best I could be at it. So here's my dad, and I'm, I'm feeling good that I can do my multiplication tables. And he would race with me and beat me, and I thought, I want to beat him one day. And so those are moments that got me for the love of learning. And then as I got older, and, and things that teachers would say, I remember my eighth grade math teacher made a comment when I had a big math problem. I was the only one to get it right. I said, you know, you, you're something, you've got something special going on. And then high school is the same thing. So it's, there's little moments throughout. And even through my career, I started as a, got to go back and I interviewed for a job in downstate and I didn't get the job. And I thought, wow, I went through four years of college and they don't want me. What am I going to do? And it was God's plan because I went back to the same high school that I went to school at to teach. And when I got that job, and and then something get you know I I want to share more knowledge, so I wanted to become an administrator. And with that, as my dad passed away my very last class I was taking for principalship, and he passed away, so he didn't get to see me become a principal. And um, you know that hurt, but I thought you know I because he he kept motivating did. Go further, go further, and well, then before I got moved to the central office to become a supervisor, my mom had passed away, so she never got to see me even go past the principal. And to see that um, associate professor here, it's just unreal. From from a boy from a head of a holler here in Pike County to be come here to inspire other people to become teachers, what, what better blessing can you have? I know it's really um, hard to summarize a life or a call, but if you if you were asked, right, like I'm going to ask you here, try to maybe put it in a sentence or two. What, what is what do you feel like is your call in life? Um, just to pass on knowledge, to just and, and the love for learning. It, that would be it. Uh, obviously, math is my passion. Teaching math. I take it as a personal challenge when a student comes to me and they're struggling. I don't look at them like, why don't, why don't you understand it? I want to look at where you're having the difficulties at. Where can I assist you? And you know, I'll tutor. You don't have to be an education major to come and ask for help. If you're taking a math class and you want help, I, I want them to come. Uh, I tutor people here that don't even go to you, uh, high school students that are wanting to do a better score on ACT, uh, or students are going to community college and they want they're taking calculus class or something and they want to come and get some tutoring. So I, I guess that to answer the question, no, it's it's just that to pass on that knowledge, to pass on the understanding, and, and it's genuine. You know, when people say it, if you go talk the talk, but do you walk the walk? And I just want to be approachable. And, and to know that there's not a dumb question. It's, it's come and ask them. If you don't understand something, you know, come and ask them. The, um, so would you say then like your job currently aligns with your call in life? More than I can even imagine. And I'll say this again, God's in control. You, you think about as a child, wanting to teach other children or, or to help them out do their math and I become a math teacher. And then from that I want to help a whole school, not just a classroom. So I become a principal. And then I want to try to help all the math teachers. So I work in the central office. And now I get to help people that are just starting out as teaching. So
so it's, it's, it's just amazing. And, and God has a plan, and, and he, He's like the potter. In he's just molding you and getting you ready for the next adventure, and that's what I'm, I'm getting ready for. I'm still getting ready for this next adventure, and who knows what will happen in five, ten years from now, but just faith is it, and, and, and truly believe passion and love that you have. And, I hope I answered the question, but I rambled on a lot. But it's just the, it's the love of teaching. Mm. Yeah, you talk, you shared a beautiful story about your dad. You know, coming home and doing multiplication tables with you and racing you. You know, is there been anybody else who's really inspired you to kind of know your call to live into that call? My dad and my mom was two of the most important people. Um, constant, like I said, just to know that what they didn't get to do. Uh, my dad's father had passed away when he was a senior in high school, so he dropped out to provide for the family. Uh, my mom, the time that she was raised, she was born in 1925, it was frowned upon for the girls to go to high school. Once they get to eighth grade, that's it. They're not supposed to go any further. Uh, then to know that what they missed out on and know the value of education was instilled in me. So that's the, that's the building blocks. And then it was the teachers I had. I, I had Rufus Justice, a math teacher at, at the Grapevine. And Plenty Gail Sawyers, who's, who's my high school math teacher. Uh, I mean, they were so knowledgeable. And I even would joke around with Mr. Sawyers in high school. I would say, now one day I'm going to go to college. I'm going to come back and take your job. And I came back. I didn't take his job. But I got to teach with my teacher. And you talk about amazing. That is. I still, still gets chill bumps just to know that the people you looked up to and still have the respect to say, here, Mr. Sawyers, and even today I'll call him Mr. Justice and Mr. Sawyers. It's just that respect that, that's instilled in you that you have for teachers. and So each one of those people play a role in, into that. And probably the first student I had was my, my little brother. Uh, I got to, I tutored him all the way through. And he would, he, says even today, he's, he's a couple years younger, he said, no matter how many people you teach, David, remember I was your first student. And so, you know, it's things like that. So if someone was watching this and they said, oh my goodness, like you're living my dream. You're doing actually what I want to do. What did you do to put yourself in position for this? Don't be afraid to take a chance and go to the next step. Don't get comfortable. If you become comfortable, you're selling yourself short. If all I wanted to do, and I don't mean this, but if all I wanted to do was to go to high school because my parents didn't get to go, I'd, I'd done more than they did. Or if I just wanted to go to college, I'd done more than they did. If I wanted just to get a degree in college, I'd done more than they did. If I wanted to stop there, in their eyes, I'd done better than they did as far as education. But don't get comfortable with that. I said, I applied for a job downstate and didn't get it. Doesn't mean you don't try again. So I, I got a job back here. I applied for a principal's job. You know, teaching was a lot of accolades. I, I remember my staff voted me Teacher of the Year. So, you know, and that's from the teachers, and that was awesome. Uh, and I got that. The next step I wanted to do is I wanted to be an administrator. People say, oh, you won't, you'll miss teaching. And they were out, I missed it, but I got to serve them more with other people. Uh, I didn't get the first job I applied for. I didn't get the second. I didn't get the third job. But the fourth job I got. So, um, school got closed down. They consolidated schools. And I thought, oh God, why, why are you doing this? I, I had the reputation of being a, a really good principal and now my school's closed and you know, what will happen to me now? And, and he just set you here, you know. The math standards came out. I looked around, who, who will study the math standards? I'll do it. New assessments comes out, who's going to do that? I'll do it. So don't be afraid to take the challenge. Uh, I remember I had 29 years in, I'd been teaching adjunct classes here at UPAC for probably about four or five years. And Shirley Nelson had me teaching and she contacted me and said, David, why don't you come and work here full time? And I said, I don't know. I'm, got this, I'm an assessment coordinator, I'm an instructional supervisor, I'm kind of 
at the top of my game here. I'm, I don't need to really to make the change again. And then Dean Hess called at that time, Dr. Hess, but he was Dean Hess at that time. And he said, would you come in and talk to me? So I said, okay. And he talked to me and he said, why don't you want to come here? And I really didn't have an answer for him. And he just kind of laid out you know, what you're getting. And he said, would you at least consider it? I said, yeah, I'll consider it. And he gave me a certain day to consider it by. And I really didn't consider it. I, I, I guess you could say I lied to him because I really didn't consider it until about a week before the deadline came up. And he contacted me. He said, it's about a week, you know. You, you said you'd give me an answer then. And I said, I'll give you the answer. And it was on a particular Friday, so it was a Friday before that. I took a trip to Frankfurt to see if I retire, what I would make, and if everything's okay. And this was this calming thing went on me. And it's time to do it. I think it's time. So I signed the papers. I called him back and I said, Dean Hanson, the job's still available. I just signed the papers. I'm officially retired. I'll come to work. And you got to be, don't be afraid to take that chance. Don't step out of your comfort zone. We hear it say all the time, it's easy said, but it's hard to do sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to fail. So that, that begs the final question, this idea of when people come to you, obviously all these years in education, you've had thousands of conversations with students, right, thousands. And when you meet that student who either in high school or now here at, at college or just out on the street when they had you in the classroom, and they say, I just don't really know what I'm supposed to do with my life, what advice do you have? I have this same conversation with my son who's currently a freshman. He has no idea what he wants to do. Uh, and I ask questions, just typically he asks, what do you like? And he, he goes through the questions of those. And obviously you gotta like, you gotta enjoy your job. But again, do do it all. Don't don't put yourself in a box. Do it all. Uh, people want to say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be this. Do it all. You get one shot at life, and that's it. It's it's not a game. You don't get to hit reset and replay it. But it's one shot. Do it all. Dream the dreams. Try. The worst thing you can do is think, could I have done that? So if you want to try it, try it. If you fail, you probably learn something else. But I learned from failures. I, as I said, there's a lot of jobs I didn't get. There's a lot of things I didn't do. You're looking at somebody that got a D in swimming for PE class. I didn't fail, I got a D, but I didn't drown. I don't know. But I, you know. We fail, we don't get all things, and it's okay. I mean, it, it it's on a transcript. You can look it up right now. You'll see P.E., swimming, D, David Sloan. But in the big ball of things, I got to, I didn't know how to swim, but I wanted to learn. So I got a D in the class. So I could have took basketball or something else, maybe, and maybe got a little bit higher grade, but I got a D in swimming. So what? <laughs> I took a chance, and I can tell people I probably can't swim a lick, but <laughs> at least I went to class to try it. So, and that, that's just a minute example. But whatever you want to try, try and see. And if you don't succeed at it, you'll never have to look at the what if questions and, and, and live those things. So, what if I'd have done this, and what if I'd have done that? Don't don't live your life that way, because it's you can't. It, it's it's musical, so don't do that. It, I, get high on life, it's just great, it's just enjoyable.